Recently, this course called the Badr Club was open to join for just 14 days. And during that time, I heard the most crazy assumptions, criticisms and attacks. Should you have joined the Badr Club? And what does that mean about courses and du'at making money online? Assalamu alaikum. So who am I? I'm Amin. I've been buying courses for 10 years and I've spent thousands of pounds on courses. I've bought from Muslims, I've bought from non-Muslims and I've sold courses to Muslims and to non-Muslims. I've got a good idea of what a good course looks like. So let's go through some of the criticisms and then at the end I'll give you my verdict on whether you should have joined or not and whether this is a scam and whether the attacks and assumptions were correct. So firstly, this is not even a real criticism. It's not worth spending more than 10 seconds on. Some people are saying it's a scam. A scam is where you give money and you get nothing in return. You've been tricked. You've given money and you know when they say, oh, I, I am selling iPhone for $100, you want it. That is a scam, right? You send them the money, you get nothing sent over to you. That is a scam. This is not a scam. And now the first real criticism is that the marketing around the Better Club was all focused on materialistic gaining of wealth and status. You know, the cars, the Lamborghinis, the fancy Dubai lifestyle, eating big dinners in fancy restaurants. This was what was used to promote the Better Club. And when you go on the website, you think, okay, one of the elements is about making six figures. So it's really all about this materialistic, capitalistic lifestyle, which is too dunya focused for a Muslim. And it's not befitting of a da'iya, someone like Imran, to be putting out there and promoting. Another criticism that came alongside this, which shouldn't have, is that it's similar to Andrew Tate. So you're just taking Andrew Tate's thing and adding an Islamic twist to it. And everyone hates Andrew Tate, or a lot of people do. And therefore it's like, yeah, he's trying to be Andrew Tate, so I hate him as well. For me, I agree with this criticism in terms of we shouldn't be going around promoting this. You know, we shouldn't have the du'a to the shuh going around seeming like they're promoting this lifestyle because this is not a big aim for us Muslims in this world. However, I'm not a perfectionist or a Puritan, so I can see why Imran might use that for promotion even though he's not into that lifestyle himself and he wouldn't promote that lifestyle to the people in the Badr Club even. In the end, he's included the Lamborghinis and the Dubai lifestyle to sell the program to make money. So it's used for promoting the program. Does it mean he's promoting that lifestyle? Not really. It's just kind of in the background. And even in one of the promotional videos, he was saying how I don't even like cars. I'm not even into cars. Has the dunya got to you? And he actually answered that criticism there and then. So if you're attracted by that lifestyle and you buy the course because of that attraction, then once you get in there, now you're more in his circle of influence and he can then influence you to be more attached to Allah and the Akhirah than the dunya and that lifestyle. So once you're in, you're in his circle of influence more and he can influence you more. But through 60 second and 30 second clips, he's not going to influence you. So he might as well use those cars and stuff to draw people in and then he can help them on a deeper level. And I actually believe in this personally when I sell my programs and I think of marketing is we need to show people what they want but then when they come in and buy we give them what they need. So for example us at Muslim CEO we help Muslims to start knowledge businesses. Now if you were thinking about starting a business you want to hear about money money money. Maybe you want to hear about running a business without much time. Maybe you want to hear about starting a business without big investment right? This is what you want but what you need is mindset and the right attitude. But if I sold that to you, if I said oh your mindset is going to be amazing, no one would buy. So we bring them in with the promise of what they want and what do we give them? We give them what they want but we also give them what they need. So I would actually agree with this as a principle. Same with martial arts for example, you might sign up wanting to be strong, wanting to look ripped, wanting some sort of outcome like that but what you get is discipline. If it was just discipline being sold to you, then you probably wouldn't sign up. But because the strength, the ability to fight maybe is being sold to you and you want that, you take that. But what you get in the end through months of training is discipline. Now, the other criticism is that it's too vague, right? What am I getting with this? It's £313. We'll get to the whole price point later. But what am I actually getting? It says you get some live workshops, you get a community and you get access to then buy future retreats. And I think this is legit criticism. But at the same time, it's not a moral problem. It's not something that Imran is doing fundamentally wrong, ethically wrong. No, it's just something that maybe would weaken his sales because he didn't sell you on the exact details of what the benefits you're going to get out of each point and what the features and the way you're going to learn about it. So less people might be inclined to buy. However, having said that, maybe over the years, over 10 years, he's been building up his audience, people trust him. And therefore, if they just see a general vague outcome that he's offering them, they will buy it. And that's fair enough. 
So yeah, I think this is just something where maybe his marketing could be stronger, but it doesn't mean it's something ethically wrong in the first place. The third criticism is that he's not qualified to teach these things. Why is he going out there showing his lifestyle, this and that, and he's not qualified and he's trying to teach us how to do it ourselves. Again, this is not an ethical problem. This is not a problem of right or wrong, haram and halal. As long as he believes he can help you, deep down sincerely he believes, then he's fine to sell this. It's, there's nothing wrong with selling this. When whether you're convinced whether you should buy it, that's a whole other issue and you're free to choose. No one is coercing you, forcing you to buy this. But remember, some people, they're in his audience, they've known him for years, they trust him. So when he says, I can help you, they say, okay, I believe that you can help me. Another criticism is 330 pounds. This is too expensive. Wallahi, it's not expensive. I was just looking at a course that I was looking to join and it's $10,000, not one time, $10,000 per year, okay? So these education things can go up in price much, much more than 300 pounds. And honestly, a lot of the time they're worth it. If you're buying from the right people have the right expertise you're looking to level up in that specific area of your life and that's what they're offering then yeah it can be worth thousands and thousands of pounds or dollars to join something like this now whether this specific program is worth that that's for you to decide but 300 pounds in and of itself is not a lot of money to learn something potentially change your life when people are going out spending 800 pounds on an iphone spending 100 pounds 50 pounds here and there on steak dinners spending 100 pound 250 pounds on trainers then you offer something that could change someone's life if the promotion around it is correct, it could change someone's life. When that's 300 pounds, oh no, that's too expensive. This, I'm telling you, this is a poverty mindset. Where you buy the TVs, you buy the trainers, you buy the iPhones with your money, but when something could actually fundamentally change your life and not distract you from your goals, oh no, now that's too expensive. Now the biggest criticism was that you're claiming to make six figures and you're going to help us to make six figures a year, but you're still raising money for your DAWA projects, for your teaching. Now look, this is going to sound weird to some people, but 100k is not that much money. Especially if you're talking revenue for your business, then you, anyone in business will really know that it's not a lot of money. After taxes taken out and you're living a certain, you know, decently comfortable way, you're not going to have like 40k left over to put into your DAWA project. So if you think about it, he's got two entities, separate entities. He's got the DAWA one, which is non-profit from what I understand. And then he's got his business, yes? You should not see these two things as the same thing. When it comes to the DAO project and raising £40,000 over a two-year period, then A, it could be giving people the opportunity to have reward. B, it could be that he did put money in, he just didn't tell you. Why are you assuming that? And C, just because you can't put a clean 40 k into your DAO project, it doesn't mean that you're not making 100 k yourself. So yeah, maybe it's distasteful for you to be talking about making money and showing yourself living a certain lavish lifestyle, but then you're asking people for donations for your project. But the truth, the people criticizing made certain assumptions that he hasn't already put his own money in. Maybe he put in 20K and now he needs another 40K. Very easily that could happen. You're in London, uh, rent is high, people's salaries are high, this and that. So those are the criticisms. To be honest, most of them are stupid. Some of them are legit. And inshallah, what you got from this so far is how to think, how to make decisions, how not to assume, how to look into the details, how to be a bit more business savvy. So what can we learn from this to actually benefit from this stupid controversy gossip? And then I'll go on to talk about my recommendation for whether you should have joined or whether you should join when it opens next. So number one, don't assume unless there's actual proof. So for example, people are saying, you're raising 40K, why don't you put 40K in yourself? How do you know he didn't put 40K already? You don't know, these are assumptions, negative assumptions. Number two, lose this stupid mentality that courses are scams. If you get something in return, it's not a scam. Whether you made a good decision or not, that's something completely different. It doesn't mean it's a scam, don't use that word. By thinking this way and talking this way, you're actually pulling people backwards, but I'll make a whole other topic on courses another time. And now number three, there is a difference between what is morally, ethically wrong, haram, halal, etc., and what you aren't convinced by or what you don't like. These are two different things a lot of the time. So you weren't convinced by the fact that it was five vague workshops and you don't really know what you get, but that doesn't make it wrong. That just makes it maybe not convincing for you. Other people might be convinced, others won't be convinced, but ultimately it's not a wrong and right issue, an ethical, moral problem. So inshallah we can benefit from those points. Now, 
Would I recommend you, you, my younger brother, coming to me asking whether you should buy the Better Club? What would I say? Look, I would say very simply, no. <laughs> okay, no. Unless you think the network on its own is worth £313. If you believe that, yeah, I would say go ahead and join because I think the network will deliver on its promise. As for the workshops, I know for a fact I've bought many courses and I sell courses. I'm not convinced that you can actually get success in those areas of your life with just one live workshop. You need ongoing support, more detailed training, maybe workshops, maybe coaching here and there, being able to ask questions and get answers. So I don't think it would really deliver in that sense. So yeah, if you think the community is worth it, I would go for it. If you're in it for those workshops and those workshops really getting you that result, I think it's way better to get something detailed from someone specialized. So for example, if I was looking to buy a course on how to run YouTube ads, which is something I was looking at, I would prefer not just to buy something from someone who's really good at YouTube ads, but someone who's really good at YouTube ads for my specific business model right? That's how specific, that's what I've learned about buying courses is that I would go very specific if possible, if I could find that. So the Better Club is the opposite of that, where it's not specialized at all. You're supposed to be able to transform your life in five areas, but just with one workshop and with someone who's not going to be specifically a master of all those areas. It's difficult to be a master of all those areas. So yeah, on the course content kind of side, I think it's a bit weak. So yeah, we went through the criticisms. Inshallah, you learned how to think in a more balanced way because I wasn't seeing any balance or nuance in the arguments. Inshallah, this helped you to learn how to think and how to make a decision on a course in the future. And if you're a Muslim man looking to improve yourself, work towards your goals, then subscribe to this channel. You'll probably enjoy it.